What's up, heroes? My name is Silo Clone, and welcome to Ace Academy. We are going back to Ace Academy. For those of you that don't know, Ace Academy is the precursor to Crystalline. It is Pixel Fade's first out there visual novel. This is how I got into Pixel Fade, was when I caught Ace Academy through a buddy of mine and started it in early access. So we're going to start all the way on over, because I realized our playthrough from before started in early access, and I think a lot has probably changed since I first started playing it. So we're going to go right ahead and start up a new game here at the Academy. We are still going to do a Mayu route. So welcome to Ace Academy. Let's get a few things set up. My first name is Cy Blur. And we'll just do last name of Clone. Something simple. Proceed as Cy Blur. Clone. Yes. Yes. Select his main characteristic. I think... I think I'm, so we've got athletic here. Speed and endurance come naturally to me. Uh, and I'm always looking for new ways to improve my strengths. I can hold my own in a fight and react quickly in tough situations. Intelligent. Knowledge is power. I excel in academic studies and can pick up new things easily. Exams are breezing with little to no studying. Intuitive. Do they look stressed? What's their body language like? What are they tr really trying to say? I've always had a knack for reading people and their emotions. I think I went with intuitive last time. And I'm certainly going to do so as well, just to be able to read in to the girls and everyone that's out there as well, just to make sure we're getting things just right. Uh, we're going to go with intuitive. All right. Looks like we're all set to go. Good luck at Ace Academy, and thank you. Let's go on off back to the Academy. Attention I... passengers. Yes. We will be arriving at our destination shortly. Okay. Please ensure you have all your belongings prior to exiting. I, I, I think I have everything. Do we, do we have everything? I think so. Uh. 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 What? Something strikes my cheek. I turn away from the window and see a small hand beside me. Oh, this is a cool looking train. Nikki. Hi, Nikki. I glance at her sleeping form. She was always a bit of a restless sleeper. I move her hand back to her side. Not as gently as I could have. We're almost there. She may as well wake up. She stirs and stretches with a wide yawn, hitting me in the face again. That one she must have meant she must have done on purpose. Oh, hey bro. Looks like I dozed off there. Did you sleep well? You just punched me in the face face and that's how you're saying hello to me revenge what is this sleep you speak of <laughs> sleep grumble just got punched in the face again so grumble 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 folding my arms across my chest i sink back into my seat and mutter under my breath <laughs> if i had been asleep that would have been a rude awakening so i think i'm entitled to be a little grumpy Aw, someone's a little cranky pants. No! Shut up! As she pats my head, I see, sink deeper into my seat. My protests gradually devolving into nothing more than a low growl, just... Grr. Nikki beams at me. At least one of us is enjoying this. The sun shines in my eyes, catching my attention. The sky is ablaze with deep reds and oranges and orange as the sun creeps towards its reflection on the glittering ocean. A soft breeze ripples the trees beyond the coast. The leaves seem to wave goodbye as we race past. Doesn't it look like something out of a fairy tale? It certainly does. I'm looking at the cityscape in the background. You got the sun on the bright right side. It, it really does look like something out of a fairy tale. Or maybe even, dare I say, a visual novel. There's a smile on her lips, but her warm eyes search my own. After a moment, she looks down and slinks back into her chair. You know, you, you didn't have to come, too. You were already in your first year at CINY, and, well, you didn't have to come, too. Of course I did. I can't leave my little sister alone. Great, back I go, then. That's what big brothers are for. Someone has to take care of you. Well, that is, that's what big brothers are for, because that's just mean, and that she might, uh, you know what? Someone has to take care of you. That's what big brothers are for. If I don't come, 
Who will take care of you? Nikki frowns and her eyes lose their warmth. No one needs to take care of me. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm about to start my last year of high school. That, to, to me, you're still a kid. That's not what I meant. She, it's easy to forget she's no longer that little girl who pretends to be sick because she's too nervous to start her first day of school. We've just been uprooted from the only life we've ever known. And yet Nikki is the epitome of calm as she waits for our train to stop. Nikki? But she's already turned her back to me and is fussing with her purse. Of course. Gotta Please fiddle with the fur purse. Please stand clear of the doors. Um, I'm sitting down so I don't think I'm near the door. I can't help but feel a little bad. As we exit the train, I'm bombarded with a cacophony of noise. A businessman walks briskly past, talking sternly on his phone, while a nearby mother tries in vain to soothe her screaming child. A group of older women sneak quick glances at us and whisper amongst themselves. Every so often, they burst into laughter. What are you laughing at, old ladies? Nikki eagerly steps off the train and breathes in the cool air. Fortunately for me, she quickly reverts to her usual self. <sighs> That's more like it. Who easily distracted and forgets everything that we've just done. She glances back at me and puts her hands on her hips. Hurry up, slowpoke. Slowpoke, slow. Struggling with the weight of both our luggage, I stumble off the train. You know, you could probably help me out rather than just mock me, right? The suitcases fall ungracefully beside me onto the platform. It's a good thing there's no nothing fragile in here. Offering to carry both of our bags no longer seems like such a good idea. Oh, so I put myself in this situation. She should have carried her own bag. Great. Fantastic. Wonderful. I take a moment to stretch my burning limbs. See Uncle Ka You see Uncle Kaito no yet? Mm -hmm. Not yet. When were we supposed to meet him? Um, that is a very good question. 6.30-ish. Looks like he's running a bit late. Probably traffic. After a few minutes of scanning, a familiar face appears out of the crowd. Uncle Kaito! Hi, Uncle Kaito. Looking dapper as usual. I should have should have worn my own tie. Love the pinstripe man. His face splits into into a wide in a wide grin. Welcome to Japan. I'm pretty sure you know how to speak English. Nikki giggles at Kaito's English. Hello, my name is Nikki. Uh huh. Hey, hello! Uncle Kaito speaks fluent English. WTF? Uh, that, that sounds funny. Uncle Kaito speaks fluent English. Um, the heck? Um, we're gonna go with... What? Um, why are you two talking like that? What do you mean? Stop. Stop what, Mita? Don't you call me that! Seriously? Nikki and Kaito burst out laughing. There's no way I'm actually related to these two. A loud grumble interrupts us. <laughs> Sorry. That was your stomach! That was loud! I thought it was mine! Uncle Kaito roars with laughter. Let's get some food in you. That sounds delicious. Let's go eat. Get in the car, drive on home, and get some din din. Welcome home. Thank you. Ah, such a lovely home. Look at the apartments in the background, the nice screensaver on the computers. This place is the opposite of the cozy yet cramped apartment I expected. Instead, I feel like we've just walked into the cover of a home decor magazine. Only the best hungry? from Uncle Kaito. Be here soon. Yes, I'm starving. Feed me. Sweet. What are we having? Well, I figured it'd be good to expose you to some true Japanese cuisine. Best way to do it, get us started right away. Which is... Sushi, of course. 100% bona fide nigiri sushi tomaki sushi. Yes. Mmm, sushi. Sounds good. Damn it, I hate raw fish. Well, while I, I do IRL, mmm, 
some sushi. Great. I love sushi. Kaito grins. Your American sushi can't even begin to compare to the authentic stuff. So I have been told. By the way, your things came in a few days ago. I put them in your rooms. Why don't you two go upstairs and start unpacking while I get dinner ready? That's probably a good idea. I gotta find all my stuff like my PJs and probably ready to go to sleep. Sounds good. Nikki nods and we head upstairs together. Gotta get settled and unpacked and find all of our things. Get familiar with the new house while dinner's getting made. The hallway upstairs is narrower than the one back home, but Kaito's house is not small. Nikki heads into the first room on the right. My room is right beside hers, and Kaito's is further down the hall. Even with all of the boxes lying around, I'm surprised by how spacious my room is. It might even be larger than my dorm room at CINY. I head over to the wall and sit on the edge of my bed. Thank goodness Kaito had the pets made before we arrived. That's always the worst part to do when you get someplace, or you get, especially in college when you get into a new dorm gotta make the bed each time even when you do so at home you just get home and you just want to go to bed especially after a long day i don't even remember which box holds my linens makes it even easier maybe this one especially if we can't find all of our things i pull the nearest box towards me and rip open the top just close it here may as well start putting some of this away though can't hurt you gotta start somewhere start with the box on top i've just emptied the box when kaito's voice echoes from downstairs Hey guys, fruit's here! Coming! Runs away after dinner. Uh, I'm stuffed. I don't know why you have the little stormy cloud, though. If you're stuffed, I, I would think you'd just be content. Did you overeat? Ah, um, nom nom nom. I'm feeling full, too. Ah, uh, um, nom 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 nom. I eagerly reach for e more, even after both Nikki and Kaito have put down their chopsticks. Well, I'm kidding about liking sushi. I'm also starving, Uncle Kaito. Leave me alone. You should see him at an all-you-can-eat buffet. It's like watching a vacuum cleaner. If vacuum cleaners could eat. What could I say? I'm just hungry and I want to get my money's worth. I finish the last piece and heave a satisfied sigh. So, what's <sighs> the verdict on authentic sushi? 10 out of 10. Good sushi. Hmm. Not bad. Bad. He says with a mouthful of sushi and rice all over his face. Is that so wrong? Nikki and Kaito seem amused as I brush away the rice on my face. Kaito leans back in his chair, resting his hands behind his head. So, what was the INY like? Hey, you know, school. The usual. Exams. A messy dorm room, a part-time job, having to go to class, struggling to eat... And you still managed to save enough money to buy yourself a bike. Hence the part-time job. True. I could have bought it sooner if maintaining a gear wasn't uh, such a money sink. Oh, you're still using your original gear? Why are you surprised? Yep. Is it giving you trouble? You should probably replace it if it needs that many fixes. Everyone says that, but when I think about all the time I spent with Dad... I'm not ready to put those memories aside. Especially now that they can never be replaced. Oh, sadness ensues. The feels. I'm sad now. Besides, Dad was great at what he did. I know there's still plenty of fight left in that mech. I guess, but Dad and I worked hard, worked on it together. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into it, and I'm not quite ready to give up on all of that hard work. It's true. Especially that one time when Butterfingers here dropped the torch. Remember that? There was a lot of blood. We promise not to talk about that again. Nikki! She smiles sweetly at me. What? I'm just backing you up, big bro. Backing me up? How? It sounds like you're trying to tear me down by making fun of me and sad enough. We gotta think about Dad. Uncle Kaito laughs. I understand. It should be arriving at the Academy any day now. All you'll have to do is present the proper ID to claim it. Which I certainly have. That sounds easy enough. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Uncle Kaito jumps to his feet and grabs something off a nearby table. He returns with a pocket of papers, which he hands to Nikki. Here are your transfer papers. They're already filled out, and all the docs you need are in there. All you have to do is hand this to the headmaster first thing tomorrow morning. Okay. Thanks, Uncle. Easy enough. 
here. He hands each of us a SIM card. Well, SIM cards are still around here. Put these SIM cards into your phones. I've already added credit to them to start you off. Wait, uh, they, they must function different than the original SIM cards. They must not just store contacts. Probably looks like it has money to it as well. That's cool. Kaito looks over at me. And you took care of your transfer stuff? Yes. Yes, I did. Great. I pop the new SIM card into my phone. After a moment of waiting, the phone boots up to an empty contacts list. I quickly exchange numbers with Nikki and Uncle Kaito. I can add the rest of my old contacts later. Don't hesitate to call me if you need anything. Absolutely. You know your way around. I don't. We won't. The conversation lulls into a silence. Hey, Nikki. We should probably unpack a bit before the jet lag takes over. Good idea. And the food coma, and then next thing you know, we're going to be collapsed on the table, just out. All right. Don't stay up too late, though. You both have a long day ahead of you tomorrow. How late is it? I don't think I'm going to be able to last much longer. We excuse ourselves from the table and head upstairs. Up the stairs we go. Got to unpack my stuff. All right. Time to unpack. His stuff. Ooh, that's cool. I don't remember noticing that the box is unfading or fading and things come in more clear. And then you have your stuff showing up on the shelves. I managed to put most of my things away before I'm interrupted. You done unpacking yet? Almost. Nikki seems tense. Although there's a small smile on her lips, her brows are furrowed in worry. And she's in her pajamas. Just about. What about you? Almost. But hey. What do you think about this whole uniform thing? It's kind of weird, isn't it? Sure, just come on into my room. You're more than welcome to. I invited you in. She shifts uncomfortably from one foot to the other. I could see the uniform thing being definitely an issue of coming from an American school just to look and go, hey, everyone's wearing the same thing. That's different. I think it's a great idea. It doesn't make a difference. It'll be just like one of my Japanese animes. Oh, uh, it'll be just like one of my Japanese animes. Are you kidding? It'll be great. Just think of all the girls in short skirts. <laughs> and those perfectly timed up drafts revealing cute, colorful panties. Ow! For such a small girl, she sure packs a punch. Nikki sighs. You're hopeless. Hey, you asked my opinion. Oh, I almost forgot. What kind of uniform do you have to wear anyway? I mean, mine's normal, but you're going to Ace Academy. Define normal, though. I shrug. The dress code says something about distinguishing the students in the pilot program from the rest of the student body. The pilots wear teal markings to indicate their program. Ooh, that sounds good. You transferred directly into their pilot program, right? Uh, yep, of course, because that's just how good I am. I'm such a fantastic pilot, I can get a direct a access. I heard that program's hard to get into. Not for me. I never doubted you. I hope they're ready for you because you're going to kick butt. Oh, I doubt they're ready. They have no idea the whirlwind that Silent Clone's going to bring them. Thanks, sis. The clock on my nightstand flashes 11 p.m. I think it's time to go to bed. What? Already? Uh, 11 o'clock at night, jet lag, and we just ate and we have school tomorrow. I gently heard her out of my room. But it's not that late. Yeah, I'm aware. Out. Come on. You don't want to be falling in sleep in cl asleep in class now, do you? She pouts, and I'm worried she'll continue to argue, but she just mumbles something incoherent and turns towards her room. Good night. Night. Hey, you can't stay mad at me. I knew that. I return to my mess of boxes and try to organize them into something resembling a neat pile. As I reach for the last box, a picture frame falls to the ground with a loud clatter. My heart tightens in my chest as I snatch it up and inspect it for any fractures. Luckily, it's unharmed. Oh, that's a nice photo. I run my fingers over our smiling faces. Looks like me, Nikki, Mom, Dad. Mom has blue hair. Yet we're all blonde. We were at the fair and Nikki wanted to ride the roller coaster. 
I remember Mom and I had just argued over something stupid before the picture was taken. But you'd never be able to tell from this photo. Mom always looks so poised and together. I place the frame back. I place the frame beside my computer, trying to ignore the lump in my throat. I'm not! Shut up! I'm not crying! You're crying! I might be crying. I lay on my bed and close my eyes, but my thoughts refuse to quiet. Eventually... My exhaustion takes over and I fall asleep among a tangle of questions and what-ifs running through my mind. Looks like we had a nice phone, too. You're crying, aren't you? I'm crying, too, on the inside. I'm waking up. Menu theme alarm clock. What? Five more minutes. Soft sunlight filters through my window, warming my cheeks. The distant melody of birdsong is nearly drowned by the annoying blare of my alarm. I roll away from the window and see 7 a.m. flash on my clock. That can't be right. Can it? Yes, it can. Time to get up. Commence operation. Five more minutes. Uh, well, since we just argued with Nikki of let's get up and get going so we can get up on time. I hear you, alarm clock. Yes, it can. It's time to get up. Oh, thank goodness, it's quiet again. I turn off the alarm. I've never been a morning person, but I actually don't feel as tired as I normally would. I'm even feeling kind of energized. Just get me my coffee, I'm set to go. Jet lag works in mysterious ways, I guess. At least I won't be late for my first day. It's always an important thing. You never want to be late for your first day. Oh, bright light, we're up. Pushing myself out of bed, I automatically begin my morning ritual. Without thinking... I grab my jeans and have them halfway up my legs before I notice the uniform slung over my chair. Crap. That's right. I have to wear a uniform now. Uh-oh. This will take some getting used to. I slip off my pants and grab my uniform. I'll admit, as far as uniforms go, these aren't that bad. They're a little too flashy for my taste and not at all what I was expecting. But the cut is flattering, and the teal stripes look pretty cool. Let's say I, can, I look kind of flashy in this. I face the mirror to fix my tie. Got to make sure it's on straight. It's, it's a long tie, if I remember right. Long tie, not a bow tie. But still, you got to make sure it's straight. The knot could be better, but there haven't been many opportunities in which I've needed to wear a tie. And practice will be better in time. I still look damn good, which is all that matters. After a quick check to make sure I have all my things... I head downstairs. It's morning. Make me my coffee, please. I soon arrive in the kitchen, eager to begin my day. Waking up successfully at this hour feels kind of like a big accomplishment. Nikki stifles a yawn as she sets down a plate of eggs and toast. Suddenly, I don't feel so accomplished. I've been one up by my little sister. Great. Did you make one for me, too? She blinks in surprise and takes a moment for her to respond. Is that a yes or a no? As a matter of fact, I did. Yes, breakfast. She grins and places another plate down on the table. Look at you, big bro. Waking up bright and early. You're taking starting over to the next level. Hey, new life, new chances, new chances to start again. Hey, I try. Where's Uncle Kaito? He already left for work, so we'll have to lock up when we leave. And I definitely don't feel as accomplished now. He's up and already working. I nod, and she slides over to me, wearing a playful look. Or sidles, I said. It didn't sl say slide. Sidles. In her white shirt and plaid skirt, she does a little twirl and looks expectantly at me. So? La. She does look cute. This is going to make my job hard. What do you mean by so? My little sister can't be this cute. Ah, uh, you know what? She does look cute, but this is going to make my job really hard. I cross my arms and scowl. What? No. No? Nope. That won't work. What's wrong? Worry furrows her brow as Nikki starts fidgeting with her uniform. <sighs> Nothing. I was just trying to figure out the best way to bring my gear to your school. She raises her brow in question. Well, how else am I supposed to keep all the boys away from you? 
Nikki giggles and a soft pink tinges her cheeks. Yes, we're making it up from the grumble, grumble, grumble. Someone's got to watch you on the train thing. You're being ridiculous. Or not ridiculous enough. I clearly haven't thought this all the way through. I'm sure there's a better way to get my gear to your school. I'm even considering writing your school a strongly worded letter. Oh no, let it not come to that. Very firmly written letter to it, that. Hand delivered by me and my gear. I smile, but Nikki sees the concern in my eyes. I'll be fine. I'm a big girl now. I can handle myself. Uh, still, it's my job to protect. Yeah, you're right. But as an older brother, my instinct is to protect her. Even if she doesn't really need that protection anymore. We finish our meal in silence, with Nikki occasionally shooting hurried glances my way. I wolf down my food and gather my stuff, then meet Nikki by the door. How are you going to get to the academy? Um... My motorcycle, obviously. Oh, you don't need a permit then? I remember you were worrying about that. That was, so, that was a concern of mine? Permit? I completely forgot. I'll need a parking permit for my bike. But they should have a visitor parking. They should have visitor parking, which I could use if I can find a spot. What should I do? Should I take my mo take the motorcycle anyway and hope for the best, or should I take the bus today and take my bike once I've gotten my permit? Ah, uh, well, I kind of want to take my bike to be honest with you, because it's cool. It's gonna make a good impression. How else am I gonna get the ladies? I'm show I'm an American coming up. I'm looking sexy. I'm looking damn fine today, and I'm showing up on a bike. We're taking the bike. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine if I take my bike. There must be at least some form of parking that doesn't require a permit. Yeah, I'll take my bike. Oh, right, of course. I forgot how much you cried when it was taken for shipping. Hey, don't you mock me for being emotional about being parted with my baby. Very funny. Now I might not offer you a ride. Even if you did, I'd still have to pass. I need to figure out how to navigate around Isokaze sometime, right? Yes. Really? Being seen on a bike like mine would automatically make you the most popular girl in school. You sure you want to pass up such a great opportunity? Please, have you met me? With my winsome smile and ample charm, I won't need your bike to be popular. You learned all of that from me. My bike just helps. Whatever you say. Nikki heads towards the bus stop and waves goodbye. Good luck on your first day. You too, kiddo. After parting with Nikki, I make my way to the garage. I can't believe I even considered the bus a possibility when my baby is waiting here for me. My heart pounds in anticipation as the garage door crawls open and bathes my pride and joy in a halo of soft light. The way the sun sparkles off the polished metal nearly brings tears to my eyes. I tenderly caress the bike's smooth curves. We've been apart for so long, but now we're finally reunited. I'll never leave you again. I promise. Yup. Vaulting from the back of, my bu of the bike, I drop into its seat with a soft thud. Still as comfy as ever, get nice and cozy, my hands settle on the handles. As, as I go through the nuances of preparation, I get the feeling I'm forgetting something important. Something that will protect my brain from becoming pavement pizza. Safety first. Helmets are a good accessory. Pfft. Helmets are for wimps. Uh, helmets are a good accessory. If my helmet looks good, I'm going to look even better showing up to school in this. The ladies will already know I'm a badass based on my bike alone. But a helmet covering my face adds a flavor of mystery, which chicks dig. They want to know, who's that sexy guy on that sexy bike? And when I take off my helmet, I'll flash them my winning smile. The only thing I'll need to worry about is catching them as they swoon. As the helmet slips over my head, my vision momentarily darkens. Then the HUD illuminates my visor with digital scrolling text and numbers, sharing more information and applications that I need. I remember reading about original helmets, which did nothing more than protect your head. I can't even imagine using such primitive technology. Now... Even the most standard helmet includes a GPS, as well as speed monitors and music players. I want a helmet like that. I turn the key in the ignition. The roar of the motor sends a shiver down my spine. Perfect. 
Now we're definitely going to have to catch the ladies as they swoon as my bike roars through the campus. I rev the bike several times, enjoying the sound before driving into the street. Off we go. This is the life. Nothing beats the thrill of the open road. Look at me looking badass. I take full advantage of my helmet's capabilities. With a glance, I can see how fast my vehicle is going and how fast the vehicles surrounding me are going. That's super cool. There's even a feature that will alert me if I'm in danger of being hit. The speakers are embedded on the inside of my helmet, right next to my ears, providing optimal acoustics for music. Some might argue that is a safety issue, but I have the sense to keep the volume low. It's, pl uh, it's bad enough pl I see plenty of people driving with earbuds in. I don't do that myself. I just change the radio station on my, on my steering wheel or turn up the volume, but I don't ever drive with earbuds. Traffic's in my favor, and I make good progress. The stoplight ahead of me is green. Perfect. Hopefully it stays that way long enough for me to pass. Stay green. 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 Stay Light guns, please be in my favor. No. Yellow. Actually, not that far away. It'd be a close call, but I'm pretty sure I could still make it. I tighten my grip on the handles, and then... No, I'm going to hit the brakes. That's stupid. You don't want to do that. I could hit someone. I don't want to... I want to look good. It's not going to look good if I kind of take a spill. Actually, it's not as close as I thought. Not worth risking it. I squeeze the brakes and coast to a gradual stop at the now red light. Several ace students could cr cross the street, chatting am animatedly as they saunter past me. I drum my fingers, mildly impatient. Before long, the students have all crossed the light, and the light reverts and the light reverts to green. Look at all these other bikes. After a fairly short trip, I arrive at the academy and search for a parking spot. Every spot in this vast parking lot is taken by some form of vehicle. Apparently everyone else drove in today too. Seriously, it seems like there's a vehicle here for every student. I'm just about ready to give up when I see it. A single free spot. A wave of giddy emotion threatens to burst out of me. I can practically see a holy ray of light shining down on it, accompanied by an angelic choir. Just I wheel my bike closer, then freeze. At the front of the space, staked into the ground, is a sign that states, Reserve parking for pass holders only. Of course, just my luck. With a groan, I start pulling my bike back. I guess I'd better... Wait. Hold on. I glance around the parking lot again. It's completely devoid of life, which means... There are no witnesses. The spot still isn't mine. You know, having been to a school where we needed a parking pass we would get ticketed because people went around and looked the last thing i want is to get my bike ticketed or towed so spot isn't mine i'll go find visitor parking still not my spot to take i'll find parking off site following the signs i drive my bike past the rows of reserved spaces after what seems like an eternity i finally find an empty unmarked spot i pull in pop off the bike, and glance back the way I came. Such a beautiful campus. I wish I could go here. My heart sinks at how small the grand buildings on campus look. This is not going to be a fun walk back. With no other option, I begin my long trek back to campus and make it back just in time to find my class. I pull up the map of the campus on my phone. Luckily, the routes are easy to follow, and I'm soon standing before the auditorium. Thank God for technology. Ain't that the truth? I love these classrooms. If I went to a school like this, I'd have a great time. I take a deep breath, stealing my nerves, my nerves and firmly push open the doors to the auditorium. After a quick scan of the room, I select a seat near the back. I can tell this is a first-year introductory class based on how spread out the students are and how quiet the room is. No one wants to talk to each other, everyone wants to sit in back, and no one has any friends, so they just sit alone. I hate that I have to take an in take intro classes again. 
Some of my electives from CINY did not encompass the full scope of course material. Whatever that means. A hush blankets the auditorium as a man strides to the front of the room. Good morning. This is Piloting 101. Is everyone where you are supposed to be? Uh, it's where I'm supposed to be, but not where I want to be. The professor waits patiently as a handful of students shuffle towards the nearest exit. I yawn and watch them leave with disinterest. He drags a web page from his tablet onto the screen behind him. This is the class web link. Consider this portal as your lifeline for the course. You will find all your assignments and readings here, as well as your current grade in the course. You can find my contact information in the tab marked Contact. My office hours are listed, so please do not hesitate to stop by. Even I get lonely at times, and I appreciate visitors. Question, is this our syllabus? Am I supposed to live off of this web link? That's, that's, what, I'm gather that's what I'm gathering? That comment got a couple of weak chuckles from the room. He is thorough. This is so boring. Well, he's got to be thorough with it. Got to explain everything. So, he's thorough. Most students don't pay attention to these introductions, but there's nothing a professor dislikes more than a student who asks a question he's already answered. Now that we've gotten all the boring stuff out the way, I'm sure you're all eager to learn more about the qualifier exams on Friday. The, the what now on Friday? The class visibly perks up. The qualifier exam will not only register you as an active pilot, but will also provide you with your team ranking. I'm sure you've already picked out your teams by now, but I'd still like to remind you all that each team must have a minimum of four people in order to qualify. Um, I don't think I've done that. A hand shoots up from the middle of the room. Yes? Are you sure exams are this Friday? That only gives us two days to find a team. So I'm going to school for the first day on a Wednesday. Odd. Soft snickers fill the room. The student visibly shrinks from all of our... All of the eyes now focused on him. The majority of students who began their first year here at Ace Academy are aware of the timeline for the qualifier exams and use their summers to form a team and prepare. In the past, we had extended the preparation time before the exam, but found that the majority of students did not need nor want the extra days. So we adjusted our schedules accordingly. What about transfer students who just arrived yesterday? But what about those of us who didn't know about the qualifier ahead of time? What do we do? I suggest you get to work finding yourself a team. Any other questions? <laughs> so basically, you're shit out of luck. Great. The student scowls but shakes his head. That's what you get for procrastinating, Billy. Good. The qualifier exam will pit your team starting four against four AI gears. You would then be assigned a ranking based upon your overall performance relative to the other teams. Don't worry if you can't defeat all the AI gears. They are programmed to be extremely difficult to beat. Please ensure your gear is in pristine condition for battle. All exams are demonstrated live instead of in a simulator to most accurately gauge ability. Okay. Any questions? Uh, not that I can think of. He's answered with silence, so that means there are no questions. Let's get started then. He's already happy. No questions. Great. Let's begin the course load. Please check the web link for your assignment and have them complete for the next class. Welcome to Ace Academy. I hope you all have a great rest of the day. You too, Piloting 101, Professor. I don't know what I'm going to call him just yet. A thunder of chairs scrape along the floor as students file out of the class. Those who remain chat animatedly in small groups. Yawning, I wait for the crowd in front of the door to thin before making my way out of the room. Once I'm by the door, a snippet of a nearby conversation catches my attention. Hey, did you see what they brought into the hangar today? Into the hangar, you say? Yeah, that ancient looking thing? <laughs> I'll be amazed if it still works. Where the hell do you even find something like that? I bet they fished it out of the ocean. The students laugh loudly. I have a sinking feeling I know what they're talking about. Is it what I think it is? As I hurry out of the classroom, I check my phone and am excited to see an email notification. I eagerly read through the email. It's just a note letting me know my gear has been registered and I now have access to the hangar. Well, that certainly makes things easy for me. At CINY, I spent days going through the registration process. We had to submit all the paperwork ourselves, and of course, nobody in the administrative office was ever helpful. Now it seems like Ace just kind of gets everything done. Ace is the place where you get all your paperwork done and they do it for you. Satisfied, I put my phone away. Put away my phone and make my way to the hangar. 
I bring up the map on my phone and touch the hangar, which lights up. Soon, pulsating lights dot the path from my current location to the hangar. I couldn't just look at the map on my phone and go, oh, I need to go in that direction. I'm going to go that way and go to the hangar. That way I get to see campus rather than looking down at my phone. Am I going the right way? Am I going the right way? It's a bit of a trek away from the heart of campus, but I make good time. I scan my ID and walk in. That makes sense that it would be a little farther away than everything. You don't want to have all these what seem to be giant mechs in the center of campus. You want them to have their own little storage space away from all the big classrooms. I follow a long hallway which leads into a grand space filled with towering gears. Every one of them is sleek refined, and updated with the latest model of accessories and weapons. They weren't kidding when they said Japan was the leader in mecha technology. I walk past several rows of gears, until... That's mine. I am reunited with Eagle. In all of his glory, just look at it! Look at him! Look at how good he looks! A crowd of students surround it. They speak in hushed tones, but break into stickers when they notice me. I push my way towards them, but they disperse before I even reach them. Most are trying to hide their laughter and failing miserably. Jackasses. I give my gear a detailed inspection to make sure it didn't suffer any dings or damages during transit. So far, so good. My gear may be a bit bulkier than others, but it's in great working condition, which, ultimately, is what matters. The colors are still bright, too. I wonder if they polished it for me or if it always looked this good. I'm going to assume Eagle always looks this good or my gear. The other guys might laugh at your gear, but I sense that it's different. Oh, that's right. I forgot you're here. Spirit. Hi, show. Something that makes it stand out amongst the others. Yes, I can feel this one is truly special indeed. You forgot about him too, huh? Huh. I hadn't noticed the student beside me. His arms are folded, and he's nodding with closed eyes, as if he's saying something truly deep and meaningful. Can I help you? Damn right it's something special. Shuffle away from this lunatic. Well, he knows it's something special. Damn right it is, because it's mine. I mean, look at me. Of course my gear's going to look great. I'm glad at least someone here knows a good gear when he sees one. I also fold my arms and nod. I'm tempted to ask him to repeat himself so I can record these words of wisdom. Damn right. I think the other guys are just scared. Uh, do you need something? Oh, right. He seems almost surprised, as if he'd forgotten why he came. He fidgets so much, I wonder if he's nervous. The name's Sho. Sho Shinjiro. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you, Sho. He thrusts his hand out in greeting, grinning from ear to ear. I cautiously shake his hand. Oh, uh, hi. I'm Silaclone. You're a second year pilot too, right? Uh, yeah. How did you... Not that many students transfer during second year, you know? You're the talk of the pilot's lounge. A mysterious foreign transfer student. Did they mention handsome and alluring and captivating? That would explain the interest around my gear. I guess I didn't quite live up to their expectations. I'm not sure what they were expecting, though. And I deduced that you are this transfer student. What gave me away? I wonder what gave me away. Couldn't possibly have been my magnificent golden locks. I've got to say, I thought you'd be taller. Thanks. He starts comparing our heights with his hand and is a bit disappointed to find we're about the same height. Again, just what was he expecting? We don't all look like Leonardo DiLaprio. I think his perception of America is a bit skewed. Anyway, you're new here, which means you're not part of a team yet, right? No, not at all. I just found out about having teams this morning. Right, that's been on my mind since class ended. I nod, almost certain I know what he's about to say next. Well, it just so happens that my team is lacking that oh-so-vital fourth member we need to be able to compete. And I'm looking for three people to be a part of a team. He looks at me hopefully, then leans in close. A little too close. Personal space, man. You see where I'm going with this, don't you? Basically what I'm saying is, you should join my team because we're awesome. 
Well, with an argument like that, I certainly can't argue with that. I'm going to use that argument if I ever have to go to court again. Why Why should? I, why am I found out guilty? Because I'm awesome. Duh. Sounds like fun. Sign me up. Sorry. I want to see what my options are. <laughs> no. Uh, sounds like fun. Sign me up. I need a team. Yeah, what the hell? He seems friendly enough. Plus, I'm not exactly in a position to be picky about whose team I join. Sure. Why not? Now that's what I'm talking about, Brosif. Hey, what did you just call me? Excitement brightens his face, and I'll admit, the feeling is somewhat infectious. Come on, our lounge is that way. I'll introduce you to the team. Oh, I'm going to meet everybody. Fantastic. Show and I start making our way down the hall. Now, where should I start? Oh, right. So there's this girl. This girl. Show talks the entire way to the lounge. He's constantly interrupting himself and going off on tangents. So I only catch about half of what he's saying. We navigate through the we navigate the tunnels and eventually reach the exit. Show opens the door and ushers me through with a small flourish. I love this pilot's lounge. Got ourselves a pool table, a dartboard, a spiral staircase going up to seat, and the most important thing, it looks like there's so many different beers on tap. I like that. The lounge is filled with groups of pilots. I guess everyone is catching up with their team. Show squeezes between the groups, and I follow him towards the back corner of the room. He pauses in front of two girls. Hi, my you dibs on the blue hair. The one with dark hair stares at her feet as soon as she notices Show, while the uh, the one with red hair continues chatting on her cell phone. Show motions towards the dark-haired girl. This is my you. She's the coolest person on this team. And drop dead gorgeous. But, uh, don't tell Kauri I said that. Tell who now? He glances at the redhead, who isn't paying, atten paying the slightest bit of attention to us. Okay, now that puts two and two together. Mayu blushes deeply. That's not true. Ah, it sounds like it is. It's nice to meet you, Mayu. I'm Siler. I smile at her and hold out my hand. She wrinkles her brow in confusion, then gingerly shakes my hand and continues to shake it. Um. Sorry! That's okay, I just figured you wanted to hold my hand, but wait, we'll get to that later. She immediately drops my hand and returns her gaze to the floor. Little shy. Show turns towards the redhead, whose name is Cowrie, he told us that. Hey, quit being rude! Her, sh her gaze shifts to him, and his smile falters. Uh, I mean, will you be done soon? I'd like you to meet someone. That's an instant change in tone. She frowns. I need to call you back. And snaps her phone shut. So, this is Kauri. Hi, Kauri. She gives me a quick once-over, then crosses her arms over her chest. A pilot? Really? Why are you surprised you're being introduced to a pilot? Not just any pilot, but a pilot who's willing to join my team. Your team? Her eyes narrow at show, and he shrinks back, then wears a sheepish grin. I mean, our team. That sounds a little, little like it. She's intimidating. That's better. Well, very intimidating. She turns back towards me. Hmm. I suppose you'll do. Not like we really have a choice or anything. Dear, you have no idea what show just found for you. Well, that was easy. Nice to meet you. You'll do, too. You know what? I'm going to meet her sarcasm with sarcasm. You'll do, too. When's practice? Kauri and show exchange a look. Whew, you're dedicated. Uh, yeah, that's the only way to get good. Duh. Well, qualifiers are only two days away, so we need to practice as soon as possible. Kauri crosses her arms, but her lips twitch at, this, at the side as if she's happy with my demand to practice. Anyway, welcome to the team, bro. Thank you. So you're probably wondering why we need another member. No, not really, but I'm sure you're going to tell me anyways. Actually, I hadn't, but now that he mentioned it, yeah, kinda. Basically, Kauri and I were part of this super awesome team. But then they stopped being awesome, so we left. That's fair. Wow, show. For once you didn't ramble. She sounds impressed. He feigns offense. <gasps> you wound me. 
All my stories are brief. I've only known him for about like 10 minutes and I can already tell his stories aren't brief. Remember when I told you about my one birthday where everyone showed up wearing the same clothes as me? I don't want to know. He turns to me. Actually, it's a pretty good story. So basically, I grew up in this kind of... Mayu knows what I'm talking about. I don't though. Don't encourage him. I'm trying not to. He just started talking. Mayu smiles faintly. Anyway, the point is, we used to be on a team, but left because the team was turning into something we didn't agree with. I wouldn't want to be a part of that environment either. Except Mayu. She's a first year. Oh, so she's younger than us. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, she got a whole bunch of invites to other teams, but decided to join us. We're pretty lucky to have her. It sounds like it. Now you've got me. We're definitely going to be a stack team. How come you chose this team? Mayu shifts uncomfortably under my gaze. I trust Sho. Fair. I wait for her to say more, but she doesn't. Kari taps her foot patiently. So, now that you know all that, are you in? Uh, yes, I just said let's practice, and now you're asking me if I'm in? They're all a little strange in their own way, but I think I can learn to get along with them. Even Kauri. Yeah, I'm in. Great. Kauri checks her phone. I've spent too much time talking to you, and I need to get home. Okay, bye. That was quick. With a short wave, she heads out. We should get going, too. That's fair. It's the end of the day. We know, don't know how much time it's passed. I don't even know what time my first class was. Yeah, me too. We'll see you tomorrow? Absolutely. We got to get the practice on. Yeah, see ya. We wave goodbye and go our separate ways. Time to make the trek all the way to the far end of the lot. I wonder why they make visitors park so far away. Wouldn't that discourage rather than encourage people to visit? Or maybe that's what they want. Although I grumbled the entire way to my bike, I eventually find it in the same spot I had parked it. Time to get going. I hop on my bike and put on my helmet. Kicking my bike into gear, I make my way home. As soon as I open the front door, I hear a clanging in the kitchen. Nikki must be home. Making a lot of noise, just as predicted. She's stirring a pot, surrounded by a mess of appliances. Hey, Nikki. She glances up in surprise. Hey, you're home early. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm hungry and I've got homework to do. Am I? It's right around dinner time. What are you making? Guess. No, I'm not playing this game. I try to peek into the pot, but she hides it from me. That makes it even less fair. No cheating. I don't want to play this game. My nose knows. I already know what the answer is. I didn't realize you were five years. We were five years old again. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. Chili's baby back ribs, barbecue sauce. But I already know what the answer is. If it's green, I must pick it. It's bolognese. Nikki blinks in surprise. How did you figure it out so quickly? Magic. It's simple. First, you're using a stock pot, which means it's most likely a soup or a sauce. Second, you're wearing an apron, which means you're making something that is either messy or stains or both. The cutting board has leftover slivers of different vegetables and is still wet with freshly cut tomato juices and seeds. The knife is stained with tomato, which means that this must be a tomato heavy sauce. There's ground beef packaging in the trash, and considering the limited ingredients you'd be able to find in Japan, I figured the most likely dish you'd be making is bolognese. <laughs> She's just like, um, what just happened? Mickey had frozen during my speech and stares at me with wide eyes. As my words sink in and she begins to thaw, she pouts. It's not fair. You still lose. That's not how this works. What? Are you not making bolognese? No, I am, but you didn't follow the rules and guess. You did some weird robotic analysis thing. Right, which helped me make an educated guess. I flash her a confident smirk. Nah, I'm just playing. I didn't really analyze the kitchen. Oh, then how did you know? I just smelled it. The house smells so good. 
Nikki giggles and resumes stirring. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm just glad you're the one cooking and not me. Everything you make is delicious. You really have a talent for cooking, you know? Oh, shut up. Nah, no, feed me then. She tries to hold back her smile, but fails. Did you go shopping after school today? I didn't know Uncle Kaito kept all these ingredients at home. Yeah, I did. Sushi yesterday was so good, but I wanted something more hearty today, you know? Something that's going to last a while, I totally understand. Hmm. Tanaki, hearty foods are comfort foods. Does that mean you had a bad day at school? She blinks in surprise, then laughs. Of course not. It was great. I met a lot of people at the club fair they held after school. There are so many cool clubs. Did you know they have a kendo club? You definitely wouldn't find that back home. Not at many schools, no. I think I'm going to try out for their dance team, though. Maybe run for student government. Sounds like she's got a lot of good ideas. Wow! It sounds like you had a pretty productive day. She quickly checks the pasta and nods. Definitely. I'm a little disappointed they don't have a cooking club, but that's okay. They offer a cooking class, which I'm taking. Soon, I will be an expert in Japanese cuisine. Means we're going to have a large variety of different food at home. Maybe you can start a cooking club. Oh, maybe. Siler coming with the good ideas. I begin to set the table for three when Nikki shakes her head. Didn't you see Uncle Kaido's text? He'll be home late tonight. No, I didn't bother to check my phone. I don't know where it is. I haven't been checking my phone. Soon the table is set, and both Nikki and I have a full portion of pasta in front of us. How was your first day? Yeah, not too bad. It was all right. I managed to join a team, which was pretty lucky considering the only considering only one team was looking for members. That's good. What are your teammates like? That is an excellent question, and when I find out more, I'll let you know. They're all pretty distinct. One girl is slightly terrifying. Another girl is so quiet, I kind of forget she's there. And the guy who recruited me, well, he's a special snowflake. I'm not sure I believe that you're the most normal person there. Trust me, you would be surprised. So it sounds like finding a team today was super important. Oh, yeah. The qualifier is on Friday. But that's in two days. I'm aware. Some idiot in class made that assumption, too, and made that realization. Not assumption, that realization, too. I know, but everyone else knew this in advance and formed teams over the summer. Well, that's not really fair. They didn't know I was going to transfer. Yeah, but it's fine. It worked Sounds out in the end. like you've had quite the day. It's been a busy first day, let me tell you. The conversation continues and eventually lulls to a natural close. Soon, both of our plates are at polished clean. I am so full told you to be such a pig nobody i chose to do so all on my own i help her with cleanup i think we, i'm going to go relax for a bit then go to bed early tonight yeah me too good night good night jet lag still kicking in a little bit night we part ways and i head into my room it's too early to go to bed so i'll start the process for getting a parking pass who knows how long it'll take before they mail me one. I'd like to get it sooner rather than later. I'd like to be able to park closer to campus than keep parking far away. I log into my web link and find the documents to request a permit. It takes me longer than I expected to fill out all the paperwork, and it leaves me exhausted. Crawling into bed, I close my eyes and soon fall asleep. Been a long day. Waking up slowly but surely again. The sun shines through my curtains and across my face. I keep my eyes shut and turn over in my bed, trying to force myself back asleep. But the more I try to return to sleep, the more awake I become. It's always the worst part. It's when you're trying to go back to sleep, like, no, five more minutes. My alarm's not off yet. And then you just can't go back to sleep, so you just got to get up anyways. What time is it? My clock flashes 6.30. I still have another half an hour before my alarm goes off. I should get back to sleep. I curl deeper into my blankets and soon get bored. The only time I ever naturally wake up this early is when I have jet lag. I'm not sure if this is a blessing or a curse. I guess I may as well get up and get ready. 
I quickly change into my uniform and head downstairs, and we will continue on our next day back at Ace Academy in the next video. I'm going to end the episode here. I really do love Ace Academy. I'm seeing some differences already from what I remember of the early access version, just in the text and interactions, so it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. As always, though, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button down below and subscribe for more content like that and stay up to date with the channel by following me over at Twitter at, at Silaclone. And I will see all you heroes in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. May the Force be with you, and have a great rest of your day. Take care.